very, very clearly, please. Agulawo was also a terrorist. I'm, uh, for the sake of Yoruba journalists in, uh, working for channels television, all those Yoruba people writing for the Punch newspaper, I also want to let you know tonight that Agulawo was once a terrorist because he was fighting for you. I hope you understand what I'm saying this evening. The world knows we are not terrorists. We have not gone to markets to bomb people. We have not gone to mosques to bomb people. We have not been to churches to kill people. We have not killed anybody, as a matter of fact. What ESM is doing is driving away full and terrorists in our forests. How can that make us a terrorist? By pursuing terrorists. How is that possible? How is that possible? Now, pay attention to what I have to say. Do you remember those police they sent to Somalia? And I want people in Lagos to confirm this. I want my Yoruba brothers and sisters to confirm this, please, tonight and tomorrow morning. Do you know those police people they sent to Somalia? Ask yourself, why would any sensible country in the world send their police to Somalia? Is that possible? Do you know what they want Somalia to do? I think that the Nigerian government will be shocked tonight that we have this in there. And I want to let them understand that the M branch of this very movement of IPOV to restore the... You are listening to Talk Talk, Talk Talk on Radio Biafra London. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, uh, great dear friends all over the world. My name is Marzi Jonathan Chinedu from Alu Province of Biafra Land. This is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you through the auspices of Radio Biafra London. Today is the third day of September in the year of our Lord 2022. Everybody is expecting and all of us know what program we have today tough talk with our first lady wada uchechi okukano therefore you are listening to radio biafra house of service coming to you through radio biafra london once again today is the third day three the third day of september 2022 today is saturday Therefore, without wasting time or taking any time, I will bring in our special guest today, Wada Uchechi Okukano. Please, madam, welcome to the program. Your brief introduction for formality's sake, please. Go on, please, madam. Thank you, Master Jonathan. Um, thank you very much. Um, I say good evening. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to every one of us, depending on where you are. My name is uh, Wanda Uchechi Okukano, the wife of Mazi Namdekano, Ohamadike Ward of Biafra Land. Ndewo. Ndewo Wanda, Wanyoma. You are welcome to the program. You know, here we say it as it is, as you know, because um, <laughs> we don't... We don't try to be politically correct. It doesn't matter. Now, let us go to the business of the day because um, you need to talk to your friends and uh, take some questions from me. Um, uh, the first question I want to ask you is this. How are you faring with your children? Um, in this case, do you sometimes feel dejected or frustrated owing to the fact that our leader who is your husband, passed through this same ordeal for 18 months in 2015 and is now passing through the same situation. How are you feeling, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, we are coping. We, we, we've had to cope. I mean, we... We have to, as there is absolutely nothing we can do but to, to survive. It, it is very difficult. It is absolutely um, difficult. Where I have um, stepped in as both mother and father, especially with a young child, 
a young boy child who is involved in activities that require the participation of, of his father. You know, for instance, you have um, a child you need to take to football, swimming, even school drop-offs and, and pick-ups. Uh, but his dad is not available to do all that um, bonding activities. And he does not understand why so sometimes. And um, uh, sometimes he's upset that I'm the one picking him up from school, you know, hoping that he will be uh, so um, it is very difficult to, to answer your question. And um, actually, he met his his father for the first time when he was three years old. So you can imagine the difficulty he has had to live with, with the fluctuations associated with his father's um, presence. Um, dejected, frustrated. Absolutely, yes. I, I do feel frustrated because I never envisaged that this part would be this difficult and unsettling. The first time my husband was taken in, kidnapped, in fact, in, in 2015, it was a great shock as I was heavily pregnant as, as at that time. Uh, that, that before yeah. you enter, because uh, that's where I was going to ask you. Let me just put it before you go on, please. Uh, were you at Afari Beku in 2017 when the Nigerian military invaded your home in order to murder Mazen Amdekano, our leader? And, uh, you know, as you're saying, it's understandable. You're a human being. We are all humans. What was your feeling concerning the whole evil episode as of that time? You can continue, please. Um, okay, the, as of that time, 2017, that is the most difficult thing I have ever had to face for months. Why was it difficult? Because I did not know where my husband was. I was on the phone to, to him. I was meant to um, travel that week, but I think I had to get something for him. So my, my traveling, I, I had to reschedule and then book it for the next week. <clears throat> so we were on the phone and, and talking and, and I started to hear this um, sporadic shootings. So my heart skipped and I screamed, what, what was that? He said, he's coming, he's, he's coming, I should hold him. So I started to scream on the, on the phone. I was screaming because he wasn't giving me any response. So I was screaming and asking, what is going on? What is going on? Th this very statement I'm making should, should be found on BBC interview or, or not, which, which is the reason I cannot interview with BBC, um, except if they accept the full responsibility to air a complete interview with them. They censor, we know. They censor things. That's it. So they censored quite a lot of um, my interviews, which I did with them on the 11th of February, 2018. Um, in fact, they asked me a question: Why, why haven't we heard? I mean, why haven't we been able to 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 see you or or reach you or or um, get get your response from you from your tweet and message? So I did explain to them that it was so traumatizing. I was haunted and tormented and traumatized for months because because of that event, I miscarried because of that very day. You had a miscarriage, miscarriage, really, because yes. of that event. Yes, because My of goodness. that very event. So because of that, I wasn't out there and uh, moving because I was quite ill and the, 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 the trauma was unbearable. This, this was a man who was getting ready in preparation for his court appearance in, in no due time, as, as we all know, but then was attacked by the same government a few days before. So after, after my, my, my BBC interview, I just I carried on with um, investigation and, and questioning, as, as always, in the background. So this is one of the challenges, you know, um, as, as I'm feeling frustrated. And um, it is the uncertainty that, that comes with it as well. It, get, it can get one very frustrated. So to answer your question, I was on the phone when that attack took place. I was on the phone to him 
when it took place. So um, if, if I can continue with um, explaining um, how difficult it is and, and how frustrating it could be, um, that I, I do feel frustrated um, quite a lot of times. So, I, and I do ask myself sometimes, um, when I'm in so much agony, I would, I would ask myself, what about the children who, who have lost their fathers and, and uncles and in the cause of this struggle? This, this was some time ago, that was before I started to fall into, into our, all, every question um, started to fall into, into the, the line of um, right answer. No sooner had I asked myself this question than I realized these situations and these feelings come with the territory. And I do tell myself that we, we are all paying the price for freedom and, and that is sacrificial. We're all paying at the altar of pain, agony, loss, great loss of our loved ones, friends and families. We go through each day, immersing ourselves in the fond memories of them. That is also a different torture on his own. It is a different torture on his own. It, it could make me feel better sometimes. It could add more torment to my, to my feelings sometimes. So to answer your question, yes, I do feel frustrated. Um, you know, going further, um, uh, concerning... Or using what you said. Um, now, I want to ask you this direct question. What is it like to be the wife of Mazen Ambikano, owing to the tediousness of this journey, his engagements, and the dedications to the struggle for the restoration of Biafra? What is it like? <laughs> Just your experience. What is it like to be the wife of uh, Mazen Ambikano? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> to to be the wife of Mazi Namdekano or Hamadike, one of Biafra, I would like to say that there has been two stages of what it is like to be the wife of Namdekano. Period of of this struggle and the present stage. So this this very stage, I mean, sixteen. September, this very September, 16th of September 2022, will be exactly 21 years of knowing in Namdekano. And minus eight years from, from that 21 years, that is how long we've been married. <clears throat> To be wife of Ananda Kano on our very traditional marriage day, he was kidnapped. <laughs> he was taking, he was taking from me. So just like what you see in the movies, you know, having problems during the day of, um, of an event. He was kidnapped. And who, <laughs> yes, he was, he was the, the abducted. The start of baptism by fire. Go on, please. He was he was taking and who who was that who did that that was Owazurike Ralph Owazurike so I, I wouldn't go I wouldn't um, delve into 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 that today life life after that is is just the usual life of of couples which. I will detail at some point in the future, so not today. But for today, I will say that it is very hard and difficult. Because you would, based on the natural order of couple relationship, want to be with your husband, plan and execute these plans together. You know, birth, birth and raise children together. And all the rest of the case, you know, as the case may be. At first, I would be very upset when he does not pick my call. You know, you know, women, you, you just, 
sometimes when you need attention and you you want to have a conversation and that time is not there so i would be upset and i would you know he, or when he does not pick my call or return my call so over time i learned to to let it go i proactively started to think oh maybe he's in a meeting because i've had to to sit while he's in meetings he will be meeting in meetings from this meeting to another meeting whilst he's there talking i'll have to bring water knowing that he's been sat there for hours so having seen all that i started to fall into line you know proactively so when he does not pick my if he's away and does not pick my call i think oh okay is one of those meetings and is is one of those um interviews so gradually it became his action plan to call me as soon as it's free we have gone 10 days without him calling me and i knew he was okay we've gone 10 days without him calling me and i knew he he's fine where he is he will call when he's done he could be airborne you know so it is tedious it is absolutely tedious you have to be strong you have to be understanding to know that absolutely this is what it takes because if you if you if if i have it in my head that it is tedious and is 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 terrible that you start to go into into a place of um depression or whatever so you know that to let that happen this is the picture that we were built together so this is what it is and this is how i have had to deal with it so it is very tedious is it, it can be very daunting sometimes because i get to do quite a lot of things you know i tend to fill in his his place and you know some things some some meetings like parents meetings and i have to do all of that so yes it is it's quite tedious Okay, let's move on. Do you receive um, encouragements and or discouragements from uh, family members concerning your position as a wife of Mazin Amdikano? Do you receive encouragements and or discouragements from family members? Um yes, I do. I mean, in life it's always a two-way path. even when when one is in school in your in your course of study in your in your career you you do get encouragements and and discouragements it could be directly or indirectly but is a natural thing is not something that it is to be thought to to be a bad thing so is a natural thing and it, it happens in every course of of one's life so in everything we do we may not get encouraged all the time more discouraged but not in a bad way all the time it is something that happens in in the course of life everything we do it may be indirectly or directly sometimes but just as every other person one can be discouraged or encouraged by by the actions of those around them so for example i i i have a uh, is my husband's cousin you know the wife she said oh you're studying a professional course why why are you studying a professional course you're going to look for jobs and you do this and you know so it, to me i could have thought that that would discourage me i could have thought mm, am i in the right path am i am i on the right track am i studying the right uh, course am i you know but that is how some discouragement can come pass so it is nothing uh, at all to be discouraged i mean discouragement is sometimes is is a less thing you you can get discouragement but then you you look at that very path and say why is this this way has something been done right or wrong and then you you look around again to see so in <clears throat> for example in in the workplace it's it's called a um, critical path analysis so this sort of um joins with being the wife of another can and you know how how it feels the the journey because i have to be in line with not just the structure of who i am of my my particular 
kind of person, but also fill in the gaps found in the critical path. I will, I will try to be not very ambiguous, but as concise and precise as, as much as possible to avoid anyone being bound by the complexity of ambiguity. So if, for example, I, um, I say, I want to make, um, I think it's, it's a maize meal. We, we call it Asuraswaka. So that is a, there's a, there are processes to do that. And I want to present it in a particular way. So I want someone to see it and say, this is good. So in my head, I will try as much as I can to make sure that I carry out all the steps appropriately. So this, this, this is connecting with discouragement, encouragement, and being the wife of an undercan, I'm bringing everything together. So this process is, is, is called a critical path analysis. I would get the, the, the plantain wrap, you know, the plantain leaf to, to wrap this maize meal. And before I do that, I will think, hmm, for someone to see this and eat it and like it, have I got the right amount of salt? Have I got the right amount of pepper? Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. So, so I would go back and run another test, which is stir the maize meal and taste for salt and taste for pepper to see. Now, do not forget that the taste boards, our taste boards are palates, they taste things differently. So I could taste and, and think to myself, oh, I'm okay with the salt and I'm okay with the pepper. But someone else might not be okay with the pepper and the salt. So that is my critical path analysis. That is me trying to make sure that that very food turns out okay. So someone else who eats it and does not like it may say, oh, there is no salt, or there is no pepper, or someone with another kind of taste board would say, there is too much salt, and there is too much pepper. But one thing I've learned, I learned that from my father-in-law. God bless his dear, beloved, departed soul. My husband took after him in, in terms of being diplomatic, and my little one as well, he, he's the same way. So my father-in-law will eat that food, and he will not tell you that it is salty or it is not salty. If, if it is salty, he will say, mm, the back, uh, there could have been, there's something that tastes like too much salt in the book. How did you put the salt? So that is how he would ask you this question. So to me, if he asks me that, I wouldn't feel discouraged to cook next time. I would want to cook and make it better. Do you understand? So uh, to answer your question in terms of discouragement and encouragement, it is a natural thing. Sometimes you see things that would discourage you. Sometimes you see things that will encourage you. So it's both, it's, it's life is all balanced. Okay. Um, let me ask you this question, please. <laughs> you know, some time ago, you briefly appeared in a so-called Zoom prayer session by some infiltrators and renegades of IPOB. Can you tell us more about how and why you were present uh, in that Zoom meeting, please? Okay. A meeting, a prayer. It was a prayer meeting. Yes. Okay, so um, to, to explain that, um, <clears throat> I I happen to be in in communication with the with the women um, leader in in the United States, Mrs. Bridget Okorafo. She's she's a great woman. She's um, she has a good heart, and she she yearns for the release of of my husband, our leader, Mazen Nandekano. She would send me a text and say, on Saturdays, every Saturday for months, she would uh, send me a text and say, the Biafran women are in prayer. And I would say, oh, 
I will raise my hands in prayers. And sometimes I will say, put me in your prayers. <clears throat> because um, after the funeral of my mom, I had fallen so much ill that um, I haven't been quite myself. So at some point I said to her that, Oh, she said to me, is, is, is actually okay for you to uh, join in this prayer? And I said, yes, absolutely, you're right. I should join in this prayer because it would be a great thing for me to encourage the people who take the time out of the little time they have to pray for the release of our leader, for his safety and his uh, well-being. So if not for anything else, I should at least encourage them and, and say, Jusini, okay, keep up the good work. So back to your question again, these are the sort of things you would do, someone could perceive as discourage, discouragement. So if I don't do that, a few might be discouraged to say, well, where is the wife? She doesn't join us. To me, it, it, could, it, it may not be discouragement because if I hadn't been told I will not be aware of what they're doing. But because she tells me, because she, she tells me all the time that we are praying, we've gone into prayer now, I felt it was my obligation to encourage them. And how would I encourage them? Directly by praying with them. Because I believe that there is power in prayer with people joining hands together in agreement. It is powerful. So I, I said to her one of these days that I would join. And then next time again, I said, today is rough for me and I'm not able to do that. Maybe just finishing from the little ones football and even in illness, because I have to do all of this being ill as well. So I said to her, um, I can't remember the month right now, but I know it was on the 5th. So I said to her the 5th of that month that I, I will join. And she was, she was elated. She was like, okay, that's great. That's, she was happy about that, which also I was very happy to, to pray with my sisters and, and mothers. So on that day, in fact, the night before that day, I became more ill. The ailment I have, I, I take medication and the, the, I probably was taking the wrong medication. And it wasn't helping me, it was making it worse. So in the morning, I was just thinking to myself, what, how would I do today? Because I was shivering. I, when I walk, my feet will be hurting. And I, in fact, I was, I was in bed. I was crying when my brother-in-law called me. That is Kinsley, Kinsley called me. And he said, oh, oh, what is the problem? I said, this thing is not feeling, I'm not feeling any better with this thing. And he said, what are you taking? And we, we talked and because he was really worried. So he, um, he called one of um, our uncles, their, their, their uncles, and brought him on the phone. And we spoke and he asked me a few questions. And, and um, we talked about a particular thing I needed to take. And I quickly ordered um, immediate delivery for that, in fact, to collect in the store. So I had to go collect, collect that. I took it and I felt better a little bit, but I was still feeling very dizzy. I can't walk without holding onto things. And then I thought to myself, can I actually attend this prayer? But because I have said I will be there, I had to be there. So I, I joined on, I was calling, um, I think it was via Zoom. Um, I had a blanket over my head because I was very, very ill. Because when I'm ill, is is all tears that falls off my eyes. So I, I got on, I was brought in and we prayed and I, I encouraged them with the word of God and affirmed the power in prayer and we prayed. And if that was the first time I actually put together the, the, the death of my mother and the, 
and the incarceration of my husband and my illness at the same time. I've always had to think one at a time. But in that moment, that was the first time I saw the three mighty high mountains in front of me. And I could barely actually even talk. I wanted to sing a lot of songs. I, I was filled with so much emotions and, and the, the, the pain as well that I was going through physically right there. Not just emotional pain. I was physically very, very ill. So I joined them in prayers and, and I realized that um, being amongst them, I think by being amongst them, I felt, or in the midst of them, I felt, I felt better. Not the fit, not of, of the physical pain, but the, the emotional burden kind of eased a little bit because I was amongst people. So, also being the wife of a number can, you have to, you know, be careful regarding your parts and, and where you are and, and things. So, but I felt great because we were in the presence of God. We were seeking his face. So I, I made a very few um, speech and I said I would be there. I would always join them once in a while. If it's once a month or once in, a two, in two months, I would, I would join. And, and then that I like the fact that they come together to pray. That shows commitment. And the fact that they understand that Nandakana is suffering where he is and he needs the intervention of God. It's also it's also great. And and for, for us all to pour out our hearts, asking God that that for Nandakana to be where he is today, that alone is righteousness onto his path. Nandakana for being where he is is a righteous man. And because of that, God will hear our prayers. And after saying that, um, I went on mute. And in fact, I went on mute instead of going going away and had to tend to the little one. So at some point, I could still hear the voice and, and noise. I thought, oh, my God, uh, this thing is still on. So I, I, I logged off and I, and I went off. So that was what happened. Nothing happened. I mean, no problems or, or anything whatsoever. And then um, I think the next day, I got a text from my from my sister's um, husband, my little sister's husband. He said, um, "Madam, can I can I call you? Are you?" He he always asks me first if it's okay to speak to me because knowing that I was very very ill. So I said yes, okay, you can call me. And he he rang me and he said. Um, I've just been I've just been fighting and explaining to some people about something. I said, "What is what happened?" I said, "You were on a platform that, that you shouldn't be." I thought, "Oh my God, what platform is that?" And and he said, "The platform you were on yesterday to to pray." I thought, "I don't I don't think I went there to do anything wrong." And what is wrong with the platform? So that was my question, and um, I will keep the rest to myself. So that was what happened, to, to answer your question. Okay, we move on. Um, what do you, uh, wholesomely, what do you say about the extraordinary rendition of our leader, Martin Namdekano, notwithstanding he is holding a British passport? He was renditioned to a country, a third country, that uh, Nigeria is not holding Nigeria passports. So it is really bizarre in the world stage. What do you say about it? This episode, this bizarre episode, what do you say about it? Um, it is indeed bizarre. <clears throat> it is, it is mind boggling as to how, um, countries who are signatory to, to the same UN Charter that stands against human rights. These countries, these two countries, they are signatory to that very Charter, the Human Rights Charter of the United Nations. 
But because this is currently being put through the legal process, there there isn't there isn't anything that I think that is not out there, um, and everybody knows that Nigeria is making a fool of of herself, and UK is also making a mess of herself because these two. They are signatories to the UN Charter that stands against human rights violation. And keeping someone in solitary violation, in, in, in solitary confinement from such time to this very moment is a clear sign that these two are probably unaware of their involvement. Well, like I said, because this is currently being put through the legal process, there is not much I should say now. But underground works are being done and the right feathers are being ruffled. Like the UN working group having declared the importance of, of the case being resolved. Immediate release of Nandekana because this is a clear violation of his human rights as declared by the UN Charter to, to which Britain, like I mentioned earlier, as well as Nigeria, are signatories. So I think th this brings me to the encouragement um, part of this question as well, which I addressed earlier. I don't know how much advantage we, we are taking of, the, of this working group declaration um, by UN as attained by Bruce Rain, who was engaged by the women like leader, um, IPOB women leader, USA, uh, led by, yeah, that's Mrs. Bridget Okafo, and a few good-hearted Biafrans. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this needs to be made known far and wide via social media handle in order to gain traction, the, the, in order to gain the right um, and proper um, traction. But prior to the UN Working Group, I'm speaking about this because this is already in the open. I actually met with um, Bruce Fain and we discussed, he was here in the UK. We discussed in details, you know, steps to be taking and, and he got the nod of approval. And here is the result. All the strategies are uh, in pipeline and will be made known in the future when they're already out. Having said this, I have been also interviewed by the Times UK, um, which was published, I think, 11th of July, 2021. In fact, I was interviewed alongside Kinsley. And um, that's Kinsley Khan, uh, my brother-in-law. And I'm sure this is also in the public domain. I think this, this so the, the, the encouragement I spoke of should, should come from the spreading of any move we make in the public, of any um, information we have that needs to go far and wide. So I believe that that very interview, I we both had on, on the 11th of July, 2021, is also in the public domain and was shared far and wide. The UK government, the United Kingdom government, they will at some point have to face the fact that it is their responsibility to see to their citizen, which is in Nandakano, just as they intervened in and prevented the, the extraordinary rendition of Leit Alaji, the Omaru Diko, in 1984. He was not even a British um, citizen. He, I'm not sure why he was, he was, um, he was saved or <laughs> why that very situation was um, stopped from happening. So if he was not um, a British citizen and he was, he was um, the, his extraordinary rendition was stopped. Then the British government will, at some point, have to face the fact they have to face their responsibility towards their citizen, 
and that is in them they can they, they there is there is nothing they can do about it they will have to thank you have you ever visited our leader this time around in the dss uh, custody uh, if yes how how do you see his uh, physical and mental fitness i'm talking about this time around this time around yes <clears throat> yes i i have seen him I've, be, I've been to see him yes i have been to see him and um in fact <laughs> namdekaro is mentally and physically fit more mentally fit than than those roaming free but who are not free indeed and i'm sure people would know that or people already know our people already know that he is i mean why do we call him ohamadike he is the strength of all he is our strength so he's he is mentally mentally the most strongest that I have ever known. We um, we discussed. We 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 spoke for quite a while. We talked about his health, which is not um, is not something that if people are not aware of. Is not he's healthy, but he needs a physician who would deal with his heart issues. Everybody knows that he has, he has a heart issues and that is very, very, very imminent. It must, it must happen. Because you can't keep someone in solitary confinement and not provide that person with the medical um, care that he requires. They're just continually making a fool of, of, of their um, country and who they are. So we discussed the children, but most importantly, we discussed the struggle and other things which I could not think about. I couldn't even remember. But he remembered them all. He, he was asking me these and that, and I was like, wow. I was trying to remember some that I've even forgotten about. So we did, we had our discussions and he, he is a sound and clear as the crystal ball that's who he is so when he kept asking me these questions i thought oh my god i started to praise and and hail him and i said oh oh the man that speaks for the helpless the man that saw the light and said no i want my people to experience this light I praised and hailed him and I threw, I threw accolades and he was smiling. And when I said, Odowu, come on, and he, he stood, there he is, his usual, in his usual glory, he stood tall, like the demigod that he is amongst men. He stood and he was laughing. He said, he said, he said, I continue to praise and hail him. I continue to sing praises of him. And he said, okay, you know you are my kiss of death. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure some, some people play chess. I'm not a very good player myself. Um, he, but my husband is, is, is a good, um, he's very good at chess. And the little one plays chess as well. So, so when I came back, I, because I didn't have internet whilst I was there, I had to ask the little one, well, can you tell me what is the case of that? I mean, what does that mean? And he showed me the moves of um, what it means to be case of that. I'm sure some, I don't know if you play chess. Yes, I do. I do. I play chess very well. Oh, great. So um, that was what he said to me. He said, you know, you're my case of that. And I laughed. <laughs> okay. So he's very sound mentally. He has all his, I mean, I'm sure that is what people know him to be, the most intelligent of them all. 
the most mentally articulative man. So I don't think there's anything I'm saying here that is new. So he is very sound and clear as a crystal ball in terms of mental and physical strength. Okay. Let me ask you this uh, uh, last question before we take uh, some few seconds or minutes break. Have you ever been contacted directly or indirectly by any Nigerian agent? Contacted? <laughs> yes. No. 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 Absolutely not. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, you are listening to Tough Talk on Radio Biafra House of Service, coming to you through Radio Biafra London. You are hearing the voice of our first lady, Wada Uchechi Okukano. Today is the third day of September 2022. We shall go into a few minutes break so that when we come back, we shall continue in the second part. Please don't go away. A propaganda machine and racist media set off by the Great Britain to oppress the oppressed people of Biafra. BBC, your media war propaganda of 1967 that led to the genocide of over 3.5 million Biafra's men, women, and children did not stop us. Do you know why? Because we are the sons and daughters of the great lion from the tribe of Biafra. Our minds are made up. Your shenanigans, antics, and fake gutter media will not stop us either. We must and shall restore Biafra. Biafra worldwide phone call campaign alert continue. Now pay close attention. Be polite when you call BBC and use the following prompt when you call. Hello, my name is, you tell them your name. I am calling to ask about BBC policy of propaganda against the victims of genocide. Since you are obsessed with telling lies about peer friends, here are five more questions to consider. Now, this is the question to ask BBC. We are witnesses to BBC racist coverage of terrorism, implying that black Africans' lives don't matter. Yet the same BBC rallies the whole world at the slightest terrorist incident in the United Kingdom. Here is the second question. But when it comes to Nigeria, BBC not only hides terrorist killings, but they slander the victims and survivors of terrorism and genocide. The third one, when will the grand patrons of lies and hypocrisy, the BBC Fake News Network, make a documentary about the daily slaughtering of Nigerians by Fulani terrorists and the government of Nigeria, whom you protect so that London may plunder via France resources? The fourth question. Is the oil and gas of Biafra the reason that BBC is obsessed and terrified by the agitation for freedom? You are listening to Talk 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 on Radio Biafra London. You are listening to Talk 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 on Radio Biafra London. Welcome back. This is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you through Radio Biafra London. 
we are on tough talk with our first lady Wada Uchechi Okukano that is who you are hearing her voice all over the world today is the third day of September 2022 therefore we must continue to the second part of the questions please um, Wada welcome back to the second part uh, um, as I thank you, yeah, as I said before about the of uh, answer the question. Now, what do you have to say about IPOB structure? What do you have to say about IPOB structure? And some people trying to thwart this established structure. What do you have to say personally? Please go on. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> IPOB, IPOB structure. IPOB, in f first of all, the, the, the mantra of IPOB is one family. The IPOB structure that I know has been set up as the backbone upon which this movement relies. That is a structure. And in every organization, if you do not have, if you do not have a structure, you will collapse. Just as a human being, what is our structure? It is a spinal cord that you have. A, yeah. was the spinal cord, the spinal line, your spine. That's the structure. If that is tampered with, if you have a problem with that, you will collapse as a human. You will not walk. So the structure has been set up there in IPOB. IPOB has her own structure, which is her backbone upon which she relies. There is an hierarchical organogram I mean, this, this has been since 2014, 2015. In terms of the organogram, that's, that's what I'm talking about. The organogram has been since 2014. <clears throat> and is hierarchical, hierarchical rather. It is put in, into place to enable the effective functioning of, of IPOB. And that structure stems from the head of Directorate of State through to the last official within every IPOB chapter. The, the Directorate of State spearheads uh, some time ago, during 2015, I'm sure those who were in IPOB then would hear a lot of, oh, IPOB is being spearheaded by the DOS, IPOB is spearheaded by the DOS, DOS is in the kernel, and then on the kernel is the DOS. I, I, I don't know if, 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 if nobody sings that mantra anymore, but that is the structure that I know that in the kernel has set in place. The Directorate of, Sp of, of State spearhead the movement and i'm sure we are all aware that nande kano is also a member of the us hence any operation outside of this very structure honestly should be disregarded and let it be worthy of note that Radio Biafra, which is why I am here today, I mean, <clears throat> I could go on BBC and, and the rest of them, but Namde Kano understands the power of media. He knows that if you have media, you have the power. The, 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 the rest of the media censored or sponsored by the government, they will always censor your news. They will always twist what you say to be something else. And then Namde Kano will say to you, Radio Biafra is where you come and you get the unadulterated 
news or information. So let's not forget that, that Radio Biafra is the mouthpiece of the movement. There could be other movements, other places in the world. There are several movements, everybody trying to make sure that we get Biafra. But IPOB, under the leadership of Namde Kano, Radio Biafra is the mouthpiece of the movement. And as Mazen Namde Kano will always say, Radio Biafra is where we worship. It is where we worship. For those trying, trying to thwart, to thwart the established structure, the very purpose, the very spinal cord upon which IPOB lies on. They need to be aware that they are functioning outside of IPOB, being led by Namdekana. And when you function outside of a defined structure, you are deliberately, you are deliberately sabotaging the objective of, of, of that very movement. Let me give you a, a biological example. Some, some people may think I, I actually didn't go to school. <laughs> During the cell formation, I'm giving a biological example as to how you function within a structure. During a cell formation, which is referred to as mitosis, some say mitosis, some say mitosis, the cells would split into two sister cells to create a bigger function. And what is that bigger function? That bigger function is known as the tissues. Now, these tissues would come together to create organs and the organs create a functional system. Now, if you relate this to the system of IPOB, you will understand the hierarchical structure that I'm talking about. Therefore, when you function outside of a functional system, you are an exo exoparasite. Uh, I mean, a lot of us, we did biology in, in secondary school. You function as an exoparasite and your objective is specifically to penetrate the functional system to cause harm or mishap. That becomes your job. That becomes your prerogative. That becomes your objective. That becomes your vision as an exoparasite to cause mishap because you're functioning outside of, of the mapped structure or system or functional system. However, if an exoparasite decides to establish a symbiotic relationship, I want our people, for everyone who is under the sound of my voice, to understand this very example that I'm given. If you, if you fail to understand it, ask your brother, ask your sister, ask, ask your um, lawyer or ask your doctor whom you think might understand better. If an exoparasite decides to then establish a symbiotic relationship with an already established system, if you remember I did say I will try to not be ambiguous for us not to be bound by the complexity of ambiguity. So I'm trying to, to, to speak in a simple term and in, in a simple tone so everyone will understand me. Now, if an exoparasite decides to establish a symbiotic relationship with an already established system, 
then there must be a form of agreement, underline the word agreement, between the system and the exoparasite. Outside of any agreement, outside of these very agreement, the exoparasite must be regarded as an intruder whose intention is to cause harm and to cause chaos. To explain this further, think about the, the grazing cattle, you know, um, cattle. The grazing cattle and an egret. Egret is E G R E T. Whilst the cattle grazes, the egret feeds on the fleas. You know the fleas that you find on the on the back on the skin of the cattle. The egret feeds on the fleas on the on the cattle. So they both are benefiting from from their relationship. So whilst the cattle is grazing and the fleas are, you know, eating off the skin and disturbing the, the cattle, the egret is as light as it is, is feeding on the fleas. And the cattle has no problem whatsoever because the egret is, is, is helping it. But imagine a dog wanting to jump on the back of a grazing cattle. What, what will happen? Of course, the, the cattle will, uh, there will be a fight. <laughs> that was, absolutely. So that is, when you try to thwart, to thwart a structure, a system, that is what happens. Because the, the egret comes based on, 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 on agreement and, and feeds on the fleas and the bolts will have it. So I think that is, that is my answer to, to, for those trying to um, thwart the structure set by Nanda Kano and his DOS members. And that is where IPOB is spearheaded from. Thank you. <clears throat> sorry, uh, sorry, excuse me, I was <coughs> coughing. Um, Let me repeat the question for your, for uh, for the interest of uh, the public. I think I off my telephone without knowing it. Do you at any time feel bullied or threatened by any individual, organization, or government agents? Go on. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I have been, I mean, bullied and threatened, I have been bullied and threatened by an individual, mm, no, not at all, but organization and governments, governments agents, in fact, the government, I mean, there's Esther, because governments and agents, yes, yes, absolutely yes, but that, at some point in the future, I will, I will explain better. Um, of course, we we all know. I'm not here. Ah, that you to... better do in the future because um, you know everybody listening to your voice. We like to know the governments that are sponsoring this bully or uh, threats. Please, <laughs> you know everybody. We we, we don't joke with uh, 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 our first family. That is the reality. Please go. On. Um, like I said, yes, um, for individual, I don't know, I don't, not that I'm aware of, of, of any individual bu bully. I'm not one they bully anyway, you can't bully me, unfortunately. But threatened by organization or, or government, of course, Nigeria government, yes, I, I am threatened by their steps that they have taken. <clears throat> And I'm also threatened by the steps of other governments, such as um, United States. Um, like I said, I can I can just leave it here for now, for because 
I, I, I will just leave, leave that for now. But yes, I am being, being threatened by at least, yes, these two governments that I've mentioned. And um, in fact, if I, if I could buttress on that, um, I have been threatened. I've been threatened by, there would be organization because it wasn't just one person. So they, these people would, would be in, um, in a dark, you know, dark van. Uh, we, we have experienced that before myself and my husband, we were being watched and um, <clears throat> we made the necessary moves that we had to. Also, um, since his incarceration, yes, I have noticed uh, such movements once again and um, I took the same necessary step. So yes, to your question. Okay. Now, what is your general counsel or advice to the family members of this global movement, the indigenous people of Biafra worldwide? What is your general counsel, counsel or advice to every one of us? Thank you. Thank you for that question. <clears throat> I'm not here today to tell us all the related history that we already know, Chino Achebe, um, all the, the quotes that we already know, all the books we have all read, we've all read. Um, I, I, for one, I try to implement what I read in a book, uh, which is why I have a problem with um, some certain sects. And when I say sects, I mean people who gather <clears throat> and create mantras, it, it becomes something they say without thinking about it. So when I read the book, I try to relate it to, 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 to life, whatever I read. And that makes me an SM plastic. I am SM plastic, an eclecticist. Having said that, we know the story of every history. So, but, but how do we apply it to our current situations? How do we, people read Bible, people read Quran, people read a lot of things. People get history from the past and, and they, they, they put it together. That is what I do. And I learn from it and then, and then I separate points that I would like to use. We also know Winnie Mandela, Mandela, we, we try to, to always um, use um, Mandela to at least make reference when we talk about our leader, Mazin Nandekano. And a few times as well, I've, I've been asked a question about Winnie Mandela and, and people just throw, throw comments and, and, and few parts of it. Some people, I don't know if how aware they are regarding the real life of, of Winnie, the things she did on the ground, whilst no one would see her, you know, screaming on social media and, and faffing about. She was doing a few things, even though she was stopped by government, which I've just answered your question here. Now... <clears throat> My general counsel would be that as a people, now this counsel goes to people who fall under the leadership of Nandekano, those who believe in his cause, those who believe that he is the hope of the hopeless and that he's the light in our darkest path. And he is the voice that speaks for those who cannot speak or fight for themselves. This council is for those people. And from what he said to me as well, we must remain focused and avoid any distractions whatsoever. As you have observed, 
there has been a lot of noise over the past year which has been aimed at distorting the vision of the struggle. Always have it at the forefront of your mind about those we have lost. Have it at the forefront of your mind. Those who we have lost in the struggle, who died with the hope that our people will be liberated from the claws of our oppressors. In the coming months or in the months to come, and as and as and has been in, in the last year, you will continue to be exposed to a lot of noise. You will continue to be exposed to a lot of noise. As Mazin Nandekano will always say, they will try, they will always try, always try. If IPOB is not doing anything good or right, nobody would want to distort what we are doing. All the things he has predicted, everything, the way he says it, it happens. He made mention of in the coming months, some of you will sell out, some people will sell out, and, and you will see the evidence. They will start running mad just by their own hands without you chasing them. They will start running. That is the words of my husband, not me, said it. That is his his prophecy, one of his prophecies. But we should always remember that those who gave their lives gave it in the hope that our people will be liberated. So their blood must not go in vain, be spilt in vain. But learn to listen. I have, I've, I've, I don't know, but I know that some of us have learned over the course of time. We've learned to listen. I've spoken to some people and they don't listen. And when you don't listen to me, I'll stop talking to you. I wouldn't bother. I don't have time to waste, to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Namdi Kano said, listen to the words that will add value. Value and keep you on track and in line with the vision of IPOB led by him. That is led by Mazin Namdi Kano. I can understand our people's nature of um, usurping authority. You know, which has always ended up causing us damage as a people. I was on on um, outreach for 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 the objective of of, um, of our people in the United States to, to come together, and I gave an analysis. I I said something, and I will say that thing again today because I haven't even seen that video. It seems that the reason why a lot, I want everyone to pay attention to this, pay absolute attention. It seems the reason why a lot of our people join a group, join a group or join meetings or join on one now join but unfortunately this is not someone now this is this is not someone now meeting this is freedom fighting organization but it seems the reason why a lot of people join groups is not primarily to participate in helping the group to achieve its purpose or objective but wanting to win and create a clique systematically with the intention of introducing their own selfish vision. 
eventually causing mayhem within the main group as a reason to create a own visionless group, which always, it ends up nowhere, dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. You split, you, you start your own, you split even within yourself and, and keep splitting. Opposite of mitosis. The opposite of the biological example I gave, opposite of mitosis. They end up maligning people from the main vision of the original group and making them visionless. Now these people become more confused, more disjointed, and more directionless because they hate the original group and have no clarity of purpose whatsoever. This has been the mantra, this has been the, the motto, this has been the steps and the structure of our people. Multiply this stupendous ignoramus by let's say 10,000, 50,000, that is equal to where we are today. Worse than we were ever. Worse than we ever were. I leave you to ponder on that. I leave you to, 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 to go back and perhaps listen to what I've said. And see if you can make any sense of it. And analyze it and try to pinpoint if that has been the case. Let's remain focused. That is the word I have for you from my husband, our leader, your leader, Mazi Nandekano, the leader of this very movement. I am not talking to another person who runs a movement. I am not talking to another person who runs um, another name of the Afro fighting organization. I am talking to the people who fall under the power of Nandekano. to remain focused and steadfast. Remember the teachings he has taught you all these years. He kept saying it. I am not an auntie. You don't listen. Everything he has said and taught for the past how many years, it seems like he never said a word. People are distorted and confused and behaving like they don't know a thing. He said, you need to be strong, be without fear. That is his word in the face of your enemies. This is his favorite quote. Be brave and upright, upright. That God may love thee. And that evil may not befall thee. Speak the truth as your bundle. Always leave backbiting and 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 underground digging to make sure that your brother falls into the pit. Leave it behind. Speak the truth always, even if it leads to your death, even if it makes you appear foolish, even if it makes you appear weak. Speak that truth. Remember to focus on our goals. We have a goal. The rest is just noise. Noise. Absolute noise. Ad feminum. You can you can write this down or you can you can you can replay it. These are Latin words. If you delve into psychology, this will make more meaning. Ad feminum, ad hominem, ad hominem fallacy, ad hominem abusive, ad hominem circumstantial. These are all noise. They are noise. They make you lose focus. Ignore this noise. And always bear in mind that there is something called power, which is the ability to alter to direct, 
or influence another's behavior or course of event. That is what we have. That is what every IPOB member who is under the leadership of Namdekano has. Which add feminines, all the people causing or trying to thwart the structure which he has suffered for, which he has bled for, are trying to thwart. They have none. Remember, this is IPOB, and we always win. Always, in the end, we win. Thank you. Dear Womanza, thank you very much for being here. But before you go, I would like you to also make your closing remarks using our dialects, our language. You are an Igbo woman. So please, talk to us closingly using Igbo language. Ure asusu ba egu ayoku ka ka mata kwa ne na so de wo nwa fu Igbo. De wo go. Nde wo maze. Ah. Asu Hamadi came would say he would say oku Igbo wa asusu eligwe. Asusu eligwe. I would have um, screamed IPOB, one family, one family, IPOB, if I would, if I would get a response. But I'll, I will say that for us all. Actually, <laughs> Ana make a limatinine, again, an ulum napalia. Ototumbe Apota begim Biakuoku Kama in her basalon on HM on HM Uche. I'm upon the Uno Horum Nanya, they come see her on Nanya. Eji maka aneke le ndi nini na bambo. Ehu no nyi isi anye potara. Neke le kwa ndi nebe hano me bere mangamije. Ni hina aibo IPOB. Aibo onurube wana waloso. Owe jirimara anye. So ITM will see IPOB and yet one family. Can you help her? Obo idinotu. Tam weraka kele madinine ni biakota ta idinotu. Ni hinai da derere notu. Manya digi notu. Oge kaine mefu. Aine mefu oge. Can you work with you? Can you work one did? Work one Cassiobi. Nihin and Danny, any Horania. What around is the only one that will be handled. Come on, you open the dindo. Can you work with you? Work one, no man. Work with a poor. Puro nye nche wan nanyi. Ahamadi kukuroko. Nye iwu. Kanyi le kota unwanyi. Unwa wala le kota wane ya. Hara ine ebu wane gi. Hara ine ebu wane gi. Kanyi hari ine ebu shu wane. Kanyi noro nanche. Can you know and che chebu wanye? Can you know and chebu nko wanye ni hina? Ile kotanyi. Ime ka e nono notu. Ime kodera ye na ma. Bu ihe. Ya ma jinore bo no te. Ihe o jinore bo no ta. Na ho ho na ta. 
Okanye nuru na nchebe. Nchebe ni kukwe ya wu. Kanye hare ino na meru aho. Onye da yo megite wane ya meru wane ya aho. Obu ya bu hikwa teroji nuru ba. Kanye ni ni nuru. Nuto. Nuru nuto. Idi nuto. Ne hona anya. Ndi ni ne. Kano no. Na akwa do. Ihe ya wa hiwara. Na mbo. Ndi ne soro begi kuku. Ikuku e buru beha. Ikuku e buru beha. Mbine jama onye hono gena anya umbe na anoya. Uta honya hon si do sa inhe ya gi hapore ya hon toa. Obe ya bone hono nya hana anya. Gi ili kotari ya honya hon. Kwadu ziri ya. Oburu honya hon koro. Koro. Oko oko. Oko 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 wo flower I believe. Gi ina kwaduri ya hon na. Achabi ya. Oto oto chichebe nine. Gi chabi ya. Wari ya hon mini. Bizi. Gi ada buru ago. Kaya i i dopi ya ki. I i i kore ya koko. No nya hano ya kam bupu kam bupu a oko ka no zo ka poro no zo kam nkonke uta ke gese ezi ni hu nya hano anya ni hinka ndi ni ne na ezi na ha ho nam de na anya nam de ka no na anya hu biga oke bu nde no no agbanye gi nsogbu ni ne bere no zo ha agbanye gi onwo ni ne Bela nuzo ha. Ma ha guzo kwa. Ha ta guzo gidele na mdu mwado ya. Ha ta guzo gidele na mkuzi. Ni ino kuziri. Ha ta guzo gidele na. 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 I'm looking for a word for pila. Ha ta guzo gidele na. 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 Na mba ziolu. Obaziri ha. Obonda. Bunde ma. Ono do nam de kano no. No po chita. Yebo ono. Na hiyo kono ne ba. Ebo ono na agame uko kwa na. No uko beke. Kam. Mpose. Madone no le. Ah, kamboro hera kile ndi ni ne na na directors of states ndi na okam kahamaro tume na gakwa ije na ni me ya ime kuni si anye pata. Ndi ni ni nono uru mazi na mdekano buo hama dike wano of Biafra land. Ya kwa ri na ndia na o media warriors. Amagi mhenga po kuibu na galant and unshakeable. Ana hapatu hapatu hapo kosisi na mdekano Ona wayam, ona wamea, ona wayo nyuku, ona waya onyenta. The media warriors were the arms. Wo aka, aka, aka IPO bija wok. Achora mi kele ha. Kai jisi ke. Tweet Tuesday, I name it. Oche taramia. Oche taramia. Kaya ijishi ke. Bunyoko. Banyoko. Na Tweet Tuesday. Ozyo wola ayimu. Kaya ishi na Tweet Tuesday. Me kantindi na ini ni unoko. Sikwa re. Sikwa re. Na mazi chike dozem. 
akwa mgbe aikuru oku otinye si naga akwa onye mbo anjono ma ajo jia unu jisike ka inye o hapuro na ku unu hapi ime bi abu kwa nidu ni unu kama maram unu amotala amotala nizibu ta inye na akaya unu amotala kini ino na kuziru unu Abu kwa niabu hivyo na mato maihe, akuziria hivyo 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 suri ya haa akuziria. Nime yuta. Obe abu ama mihe. So eke lela munu ndi wemi. Ndi chine ke choroma. Nde di ke echi. Ni hinechi ana wawo. Ahom ni neburono aga oga genzi ike luno. Ode guzo gidemi. No no do nam de kano na mwa na se ka chine ke gozi unu chebu unu toze unu kwa do kwa nzomu unu nine vwo ni hina nvoge na de ganya ambe na de ganya aega ngore kwa ngo ongo a hae ngore nere mbe garaga aega hae ngore ya nvoge na de ganya Kachine ke gozye unu nine. Eke lem. Na barunu. No no do. Ma zin nam de kano. Obi abin hai na. Well on behalf of. Eke lem na barunu. No no do ma zin nam de kano. Onye ndu. Nke aikiyobi. Worldwide. Nde wo. Nde wo, wana da, uche eti oku kano, our first lady. Thank you for being here with us. And I, I believe and hope that also in the future that you will spare your time also to talk with us or talk to us through this Hello platform. Absolutely. Thank you Absolutely. very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nde wo. Dear friends and lovers of freedom, this is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you through Radio Biafra London. We have come to the end of this program known as Tough Talk, and you've had it all. Therefore, we must continue, and we must continue. Thank you for listening. From me, Mars Jonathan, from here, it is simply good evening. Yeah.